What's something you wish you knew before getting guinea pigs? Ah, oh, like everything. Hi everyone, this is Guinea Dad here. So, a couple days ago, maybe a week or more ago, we posted the questionnaire during our live and a lot of you guys submitted to ask me questions. So I wanted to use this chance to kind of answer a lot of the good questions that you guys asked. The first question was, what are some toys for guinea pigs you like? And what kind of forest do you recommend? So the toys, so guinea pigs are different from dogs and cats. There are tons of toys that dogs love, like chewing toys, like bones. But guinea pigs, seemingly for the new owners, you might think they don't like any toys because they're mostly focused on eating which is true, and they're mostly focused on sleeping, which is also true. However, you do need to provide some toys and make sure they're mentally stimulated. Personally, don't provide too many toys other than hiding spots. As you can see behind me, there's a crunch condo here, and there's a few our future product, Wooden Castle. So the reason those are good toys is guinea pigs are prey animals, so they like to hide, and while they're hiding, they love to chew on those. Eventually, if it's crunch condo, it's gonna get destroyed super quick maybe within a month or two which is fine because their teeth is growing so they're grinding it's healthy for them when it comes to having some sort of interactive fun you know kind of like playing fetch with a dog I like to come up with like new ideas it's not a toy it's like an activity so if you check out our other videos we have building a maze building Las Vegas strip for them we even made like indoor grass field for them to eat and for them to play on things like that you know check out our YouTube channel videos to get some inspiration you don't have to do exactly that but that could be a good starting point point. and in regards to forage other than Timothy Hay I usually give our whole supplements so they're dandelion chamomile raspberry leaves and marigold it's very healthy to provide them veggies as well sometimes for bonding it's great to provide some treats just like our P-Flex. The second question, what's something you wish you knew before getting guinea pigs? Ah, like everything. So when I first got my guinea pig, I didn't have much plan. I knew nothing about guinea pigs, so I was super unprepared. But the good news is I did a lot of research right after. I had a pet store bought cage for first First couple days, this was a present from a friend. I found out that store-bought cages are too small, especially like as soon as like they grow up to become a little bit bigger, it becomes too cramped. So what I did at the time was I bought some CNC grids and made an extension. So they can, a peanut can usually go poop and pee in there in the store-bought cage and they, she would climb out to the ramp which I made and then she would play and do zoomies on the bigger area and things like that. If any of you guys are considering getting guinea pigs, make sure you guys do your research. We have a lot of information on our blogs and we have a lot of information on our YouTube channel, so check that out. Have you had other guinea pigs in the past? No. So Peanut was my first guinea pig, Tofu the second, and Dumpling third. Another question that I got was, how do you make the car trip to and from the office most optimal for your guinea pigs? I often have to drive with my guinea pig for 45 minutes once a week to see my partner. So I was wondering if you did something specific. So first is 45 minutes is not too long. If you had a long trip, you would have to kind of stop along the way every 30 minutes or so. I think one trip is fine for 45 minutes. And second is they're not going to drink much during the trip so you don't need to provide them with water. One thing I would really look out for especially during summer and winter is the temperature. So ideal temperature for the guinea pigs is 65 to 75 Fahrenheit but usually anywhere between 60 to 80 is safe. Cars during summer get super super hot. So before you even bring the guinea pigs, make sure you turn on the AC and make sure the internal temperature of the car reaches somewhere around 70 degrees and then bring the guinea pigs in. The second one is, this is the lesson that I learned the hard way. We made a long trip. We did like stops in the way, just like I mentioned, but they 
were still stressed because there's still noise from the car and they weren't so used to um, commute so often toward the end of the trip i realized dumpling had a slight rip on the ear i ended up getting her some stitches so i was thinking about why dumpling got hurt and there could be two reasons right one during the road trip i didn't have like sudden moves or anything but it might have been strong enough so that you know dumplings ear might have got caught in the zipper there is really nothing to catch her ears it was like a huge cat tent and i had the liner on there so what i think is the more likely scenario is looking at how peanut and dumpling react to each other i think peanut and dumpling got into fight they're both stressed after this experience i realized giving a big space might not be a good idea so that's why i got a three separate cat carriers for each one of them and and I put them in the back seat separately. Another question, can you make toys? Um, we are uh, making toys. Our first toy on top of the crunchy condo here is our wooden Heidi. So that's our first, first toy and we actually had this idea like long time ago, but we had to do make a lot of adjustments because we wanted to make sure um, it was really, really good and it was according to guinea pig's habit and also obviously make it look pretty we will come up with more toys stay tuned another question my parents want to get a cabin but i'm not sure how to move my piggy safely between my home and cabin by ferry with about three hours travel time if it is safe i was wondering what travel cages you use for piggies it would be really nice to receive an answer thanks this is very similar to my car trip questions so i would follow the exact same thing i'm not sure if fairies allow guinea pigs i guess first check with them to make sure they're allowed i'm not sure how guinea pigs deal with seasickness because i've never had my guinea pigs on the ferry one thing i will make sure is obviously have guinea pigs inside the cabin of the ferry so that there is no wind and the temperature is good if possible also get separate carriers for each guinea pig just like i mentioned before how often do you fill your water bottles for the girls ideally once a day they don't drink the whole bottle in a day but ideally if you can just switch it out once a day for me like sometimes I, everyone gets lazy i have two to three bottles and they take more usually about two days for it to like kind of go below one fourth level so i think i switch it out once in two days sometimes what are some things you can do to help two male guinea pigs to bond with each other i've never had male guinea pigs but i've seen a lot of male guinea pigs from the rescue centers during the volunteer and they're not easy so in many cases they don't get along very easily if you're getting a second male guinea pig so you can bring your guinea pig to the rescue center and they will do like kind of matchmaking service so they'll have the enclosed area you can put your guinea pig and they'll bring another guinea pig see how you interact if it doesn't work out they'll take out the one of them. If you already have two guinea pigs that doesn't get along with each other, first thing is, do they bite each other? So if they bleed, you have to separate them. You can't have them in the same cage. But if it's a lot of rumble strutting, a lot of mounting, just leave them. So you, you can be on the watch, but leave them. It's actually easier to bond once one guinea pig has complete dominance over the other one. If you have a male guinea pig, you should have a bigger cage as well. It's not only because they're bigger, but it's because they're more territorial than girls. Minimum by Humane Society is two by three. A recommended size of for two guinea pigs is two by four CNC cage. If you have a male, I would actually add one more grid to it. So if you have two male guinea pigs, you need to have at least two by five. Fun story is when I had peanut and tofu, I had three by five cage as a floor level and then one by three on top. So it was a huge cage for two guinea pigs. According to the Humane Society size regulation, 
It's shipping enough for three or even four guinea pigs. When I first adopted Dumpling and when I brought all of them home, you can see Peanut was super stressed. She would always bite on the CNC grid. If your guinea pig's chewing on the grid all the time and pulling on it or chloroplast, cage need to be, size need to be increased. That's when I started free roaming all the girls. So I had that cage on one corner of the house and then I have a desk area. I realized that guinea pigs love to go under the table because one, it's dark, and second, because I'm there. I would just lay the liners under the table so that they could also lie down and rest there. So by having this like two separate islands, Dumpling could now not be trapped in that area, but she can actually jump out of the cage, go to the island, and she would just hang out there and then come back. So this gives time for Peanut to be alone as well and they come together to eat in the main cage area when they want to interact. I'm not sure how this would work with other guinea pigs but based on my experience this approach might also work. So this is all the questions that um, we've kind of filtered out and I hope it was helpful. I'm sorry it was if it was boring but thank you for watching and see you guys next time. Bye!